We're very fortunate to have Christian Bowens on with us. Christian, thanks for joining us. How are you? Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today. Awesome. Awesome. So um, as is standard format with this, it's an Ask Me Anything format. We're going to ask Christian some questions around anything related to careers, job searches, networking and relationships, and much more. Um, we do anticipate or encourage, I'm sorry, we encourage questions from the audience. So if you do have questions for Christian, go right ahead and ask them. Scotty is monitoring the chat. Um, I will lead off with a few questions just to get the conversation going. So with that, Christian, how did you come into Treasury and what made you choose Treasury as your career? Yeah, no, th thank you, Joe. And, and again, it's my pleasure to be here today. Um, and, you know, um, I would say there were probably three steps uh, that led me to, uh, to the Treasury role. The first one is obviously education. So I had a Master of Arts in Specialization in Finance, uh, so that was a good start. And then I ended up my, for my first job in a, in a training room uh, of a large bank um, in Europe where I grew up. So with that, and that was frankly a coincidence, it was not something that I was necessarily uh, looking for, type, that type of role, but it was exciting and decided why not, it's finance related, so we'll, st we'll start. And obviously that led to, um, you know, developing uh, skills that were very much treasury focused. So, right. So when you work in a dealing room uh, of a bank, you get, um, you know, a lot of knowledge on products and, uh, and capital markets and all sorts of things related to, to treasury. So after that, I said, well, you know, after a year and a half, I said, maybe, um, you know, corporate is really what I'm more interested in than, than banks. I don't want to be specialized in, in products and in specific areas of finance. So I want to I want to do uh, things that are a little bit broader. And also, I want to see the world. So I said, well, um, let me find out a company that is uh, international, um, very international and, and with good reputation in, in the fields that I know, which is treasury. At that time, and I, I joined General Motors. Um, that was in Europe, um, you know, and and clearly that was part of their uh, treasury organization. And the, the GM at the time, I don't know how it is today because I left a number of years ago. But uh, you know, Treasury was the core uh, finance fu function over there. So this is where they had a strong rotation program, and and really um, a strong training program for people to move up the organization. So I really, it was a little bit of a, you know, a lucky uh, change because I, I arrived in an organization that had a great uh, external reputation, a great training background and, and rotation program that allowed people to do all sorts of things and, um, and, you know, not being specialized. So when I was kind of the the most, uh, I would say, important step uh, after, so you had education basically, and then, you know, first uh, coincidence, role in the tra in a training room, and then, you know, joining uh, an organization such as GM. Oh, that's, uh, that's awesome. And so uh, we get a lot of questions, especially from the banking side. How was that transition from banking treasury into corporate treasury? Like, it's, uh, it's a question that we feel quite often because, you know, they're, they're close enough, but uh, they're definitely different worlds. Yeah, they're very, very different roles, as you said. Now, I was not on sa in a sales team in the bank, so I was more on the product side and um, and managing a PNL directly, which you know, fresh out of college, is fairly unusual. But uh, uh, <laughs> that's the kind of role they gave me at the time. Um, and you know, I think it's very specialized, right? So if you want to know specific products in in depth and so forth, clearly banking is the right place. But that was not what I wanted, and, and I'm sure we'll come back in our conversation today. I wanted to, I didn't want to be specialized, and I wanted to have a broader finance background. So going to the corporate side of things for me was a very logical step um, because you are seeing, you know, what you use products for. There's mm -hmm. a business behind. It's not just doing uh, products for P. PNL purposes, and um, and therefore it was a much better uh, fit, at least for me, um, because I had this more uh, generalist type of profile I was looking for. Okay. No, that's. Uh, do you have? Would you give anyone advice, or do you have any advice for someone looking to make that switch from banking to the corporate side? Well, in my case, I did it fairly early on in my career, which I think, you know, there's different, uh, there's different approaches to that. Uh, I think for me, it was the right move because, you know, I certainly didn't see myself in banking in the long run. Yeah. So I thought, you know, well, that decision I made fairly early on in my career, I remember, and it was after a year and a half only, so it was fairly quick. 
uh, I would say if, if corporate is really more uh, what you um, what you're interested in, don't do it too too uh, too late. That's what I would uh, do. But again, you know, um, uh, you have all sort of different careers, right? I mean, I remember when I uh, left GM, the you know they picked a treasurer that was actually a, a senior banker. Uh, to become straight from banking into a treasure role. So, you know, uh, you don't have a one type of, uh, of career. I mean, it's, you know, it's very personal. For me, it worked well to do that early on, but, you know. So. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. It's really, uh, you know, the thing to glean from that and what I gleaned from that as well is just if you have that, if, if you know it's right for you, don't stop until you get to where you want to go and, and just be open to opportunities to, uh, to enter the space that you want to be in really. Mm, absolutely. Mm, okay. Yep. And we've, we've touched on this, obviously you jumped from baking to large corporates and um, that you went to a company with a very strong pedigree in the treasury space. And obviously uh, you're with a company right now that has a, also a very well-known reputation in the treasury space. What, what would you say have been some of your career highlights so far? Uh, I would say, you know, probably I mean, it's always a, a tough question, but I would say, well, of course, the highlight is becoming a, a treasurer of a, of a global, uh, large uh, international company like uh, like Flex is. Mm -hmm. But I would say also before that, probably I had a, a chance, um, you know, and the opportunity to work on uh, four in four different continents, right, in treasury matters. So, yeah. and uh, sometimes at uh, different places that are at a tough time. For example, I, I did. Uh, you know, uh, when I was a GM, I had uh, a stint in uh, in Singapore, so in Asia, right in the middle of the Asian financial crisis. That was the late '90s, and uh, that was very interesting, exciting because we were ramping up productions at the time in many different countries. We had to fund, we had to take care of things like risk and foreign exchange and all sorts of activities and funding the, the new business at a time where there was a complete crisis in the market. So, uh, so that was definitely fun. Um, you know, then I moved on to, um, I mean, I uh, moved to Brazil at some point, uh, different regions with a complete different level of complexity. So if you look at Brazil, I mean, you know, that's one of the few countries where a tax stuff is probably significantly larger than treasury because it's so complicated from a tax perspective and in, in, in you know, really uh, touches on everything you do as a treasurer. So that was a very different environment. I was in Europe as well as a treasurer for GMAC Europe at the time. So the, the finance, captive finance division of GM, uh, which was really exciting because it was the beginning of uh, the, the tough time for, for GM as a company. So we were, you know, scrambling to find new ways of funding the business in Europe, uh, funding dealers and funding the operations in general. So that was really exciting. And, and of course the US, right? I spent many years in the US at uh, both at a corporate level, a corporate treasurer level, but even at, uh, at a, uh, a less senior role in, at GM, at, you know, a fascinating environment. I was there in 2001, uh, which obviously was a tough, tough year and with all sorts of capital market implications. So, you know, the highlights is I've been able to actually work in very different environments and different cultures, different type of problems and, and very different type of roles at, uh, in, in treasury, right? So treasury in particular GM where I spent most of my career was a very broad role. I mean, it's not just pure, you know, the things that you would think like cash management, funding and uh, FX risk management and so forth. It's much broader than that. Um, you're directly connected to operations. It's kind of to some extent, a, um, a, a much, much broader role. So that was probably, I would say, the highlights is to have uh, been able to work in, uh, in different organizations um, with, with very broad roles. Yeah, okay, no, that's, that's great. I mean, uh, like, like I mentioned, very impressive career with very large companies and you know, it's, uh, this is the culmination. So it's, it's great to hear just the different paths and journeys that each, each treasurer has and you certainly have an impressive one. So um, let's, let's rewind it for a minute. 25 year old Christian just entering the, well, we, we won't even put an age on it. We're, we're transitioning from banking to corporate treasury. What is the advice that you wish you had or what would you go back and tell yourself right now? Oh, gosh. I mean, I would say, you know, um, there's a number of things you need to do in your career, I guess, right? One is to take uh, to take some risks because things don't typically come to you without efforts, I mean, unless you're really lucky. 
Um, and I think, you know, taking, taking risk early on in your career is, is the right thing to do. Um, knowing uh, as soon as possible in your career what you're really interested in is, is absolutely key to success. Because if you take a long time to figure out what you're interested in, chances are you may actually miss on opportunities. Uh, and then choose the right company that is the right company for you, right? For me, my objective was really um, see the world, right? And, um, you know, I was, I mean, uh, born and raised in Belgium, my, my home country. And I certainly didn't feel that was where I should, uh, should stay for my, uh, the rest of my career. So I joined a company that I knew would offer me this opportunity if I was successful. And, um, you know, and, and clearly that happened. I, I had a chance to, to uh, move to seven different countries um, o- over my career, which is really something I am, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with because that was one big objective of mine. I would say find a mentor as well. Uh, early in your career, it's, mentorship is really, really key. Uh, if you can find someone who has an interest in your career, obviously you are the person who has to develop that interest first. You need to seek that. I mean, again, unless you're lucky and someone shows up and, uh, and takes care of you, that's great. That typically does not necessarily happen that way, but try to find a mentor that is interested in your career, someone senior early on. And I had a few in my career, which allowed me basically to be clear and uh, with my objectives and, and having them support those objectives. I would say certainly today embrace new technology because all roles is becoming more and more technical. Uh, and when I say technical, um, I don't mean necessarily product because that's always been there and understanding markets and understanding things that really drives our business, but more technical in the sense of new technology, things like blockchain or new technology coming up that will actually influence our roles more and more over time. So don't be shy to embrace new technology because I think that's going to be more and more critical, especially for the younger uh, among the audience. Um, you know, uh, understand what those technology offer, what they can do. And then lastly, obviously, and, and something which is always critical, and that's not just treasury, it's every role, is the importance of communication, right? So you can be the, char- the sharpest person in the room, uh, the brightest, but if you can't communicate, I mean, that will actually limit your career tremendously. So the importance of communication is really, really key. And, um, and you know, that's something I learned over time because um, I was probably not someone who would actually start boasting and writing emails about here's what I've done, here's what I've been able to accomplish. To accomplish. And clearly, you know, some of it is required. I mean, because visibility is, you know, is, is really important uh, if you want to go up in the organization and uh, for communication and talking about what you've been able to achieve that people know is really, really key. Um, and then, you know, the rest is, a lot of it is luck because you need to have the right boss who's, yep. who will actually support you and not take uh, the, the visibility from real work away from you and, and be able to actually, you know, give you the credit uh, that you deserve when you, when you have made things. So that's probably more luck because you don't choose your boss typically, but, um, but you know. No, those are great answers and great insight. I mean, you hear a lot of or a lot of the talking that we do is about acting with intent being strategic in your career and you've just gotten um like a a mile deep into how to exactly do that that's the blueprint for how to act with intent in your career and how to be strategic about the moves that you're making um Mm -hmm. i'm i'm going to go back into your answer just a little bit you mentioned the mentorship part we get this quite a bit how if i'm if i'm an analyst or if i'm a, a manager who's young in his career how do I go about forming that mentorship relationship with someone, say, such as you? Well, uh, it depends on organization. Some organization like mine, like Flex, has a specific mentorship program. So I think where they they really have a structured program and 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 it come it can come from the person. I mean, in your case, the example you you, you took, a manager or an analyst asking to to have a mentor. Or it can come from your organization itself, the leadership, saying, well, I think this person has, um, has definitely a, a strong potential, but here is the kind of things that he or she may need to develop further, so we're going to assign a, a, a mentor. So I think it can go both ways. Uh, what I would say is if the, the organization where you work does not have a, a mentorship program, that's something that... Um, 
comes with relationship. Uh, you need to find someone who is, um, you know, senior enough in the organization and who uh, who uh, could have an interest, uh, a natural interest to see uh, you uh, perform and develop better. So I think in my case, um, yeah, it was built over time through uh, reputation, credibility, and um, and you know a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of is always of effort because again things don't come naturally i mean it's like you know you, you don't have typically people are too busy to say well i'm gonna spend a lot of time with this person right so it's something you need to build uh, yourself i mean ultimately uh your career is really what you made out of this right so the person the most interested in your career is yourself so you need to drive a lot of a lot of it yourself yeah no that's that's great advice and you know there's you can kind of tell as you're communicating with people uh, whether or not they're passive in their career, whether they're the go-getter who's going to chase chase down opportunity and really work to advance their career. So, if you if you don't know that about yourself as a job seeker, um, definitely ask your peers, ask your former managers, as like just try to get that outside perspective that lets you know, hey, either I need to kick it up a notch and figure out what I want to do, uh, and and I need to act on it, or I'm already doing it. It's just a matter of time before something pops for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You get a pretty good feel there. Um, and thank you for that insight. That's awesome. So um, now sitting in the treasure seat of a large global organization, having a team underneath you, what are the key things that you look for in your direct reports when you go to hire into your team? No, that's a good question, Joe. I would say several things. One is energy, because I do believe that that's personality. And you need to have people who have the right level of ambition. They're curious, they wanna understand, they wanna do more. They're not afraid to ask questions. Uh, we're going back on communication. You want to uh, have people who, look, if they don't know, they don't know, that's fine. They can learn, but they are not shy of asking questions. I would say a feel for, as I mentioned, technology, um, for sure. I think that's important too. Uh, you know, we talked about communication, clearly that is absolutely critical. And then I would say finally is uh, being able to work as, as a team, right? Because as we all know, on our own, we don't achieve anything. It's all collaboration. It's all, I mean, it's not just words, it's real. I mean, you don't achieve anything as, as honest and on basis. It's always a teamwork. So it's a team success or it's a team failure. And I would say, uh, you know, you can, again, going back to my previous point, you can be very sharp uh, and, and bright, but if you can't work with others, this is not probably the type of person that would be successful in most organizations, and certainly not in, in, in mine. We want to have people who can work, cooperate with others, and uh, do that effectively, not looking for just being the star. I think it's, it's you know, we're as good as a team, uh, as, as the team is. So I think that's what I would say it's, but energy uh, is very important. I mean, people are not, I mean, the people who I really enjoy personally working with is people are you know, not shy on taking on new uh, responsibilities, even if they have never done it before, they don't know the area, they're willing to, you know, roll the sleeves, try as, and, and work as a as team. So I would say those are more important probably than subject uh, a matter expertise, which, you know, is important, but can be acquired, right? With, if you have the right personality, you can, uh, you can learn through experience um, and through coaching, uh, but energy and open communication, teamwork, that is much more difficult to learn. You have it or you don't have it. Yeah. No, completely agree there. And that's, uh, you know, we, we talk about it frequently is the soft skills and the ability to work in a team and having that self-awareness is every bit as important as the technical skill set. In treasury, you can only get so wide in some cases where you're going to have mastery of technical skills the longer that you do it, the longer that you stick around. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be the smartest person in the room that nobody else wants to work with. Yes, exactly. Exactly right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, the, you know, we, we kind of covered whether you put more weight toward soft skills or technical skills, which is fantastic, but I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. We get this quite a bit too. Um, what do you think of the CTP or the CFA? Is it, is it uh, do you put any weight behind that? How do you, how do you view education uh, when you go to both in your own career and, and when you go to hire into your team? Uh, no, some for sure. I, I wouldn't say it's the overwhelming weight, uh, but uh, but it's important because it shows that people are really interested to do more and learn more and and you know 
get more qualification. I think it is definitely important. It's not something I ask for my team members to to complete or do go do if uh, if that's not what they want to do. But I think it's a plus for sure. Um, I would say I can't we can't ignore. And as I said, our job is more and more technical. We do complicated technical analysis and want to make sure that um, you know. Uh, your team actually is able to do that, right? And but now you don't necessarily need that certification to be able to do that, but it's a it's a it's a big plus, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, it's it's awesome to hear you say that. I mean, we it's a question that we feel quite a bit. Um, you know, my my personal preference on that is I just kind of default to you'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, mm-hmm. and any investment yourself is going to be a good investment. So it does show that you're dedicated to the profession and that you want to learn more, you want to develop. It can be a differentiator in some cases, but, uh, you know, it, it, the soft skills yeah. are every bit as important as that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And every career is different, right? And for example, all the technical skills uh, that you learn in terms of modeling and everything, I actually learned it in my first job at, uh, on the banking side, because my role was extremely technical from product perspective. So... I went through a lot of modeling uh, at the time, which really helped my whole career afterwards. Um, Because indeed, um, you know, whether it's bond durations or all sort of, uh, you know, ALM, asset liability management, all those kind of things, which you would probably not touch on so much in the corporate world, actually, I I did it on the banking side. So you can actually learn those skills and, and knowledge also in your career. Yeah, definitely. Scotty, I'm going to loop you back in here. Do we have any questions from the audience? Thanks, Joe. So um, last time we did this on Wednesday, I had missed a couple of comments. I don't see comments coming through uh, on LinkedIn. So I just um, invited everybody, if if there are comments or questions being asked, um, to email me directly. I'll I'll monitor my email address. But as of this moment, um, I don't have questions from the audience. I do have a, a question personally, but it may be preempting uh, one of the questions you still have to go here, Joe. No, go right ahead and ask it. Let's uh, let's change it up a little bit. Okay, great. Um, and Christian, this is you know we we tend to ask about technology. You already talked a little bit about it. Um, I'm curious specifically around and not not to to put you on the spot here, um, but I'm curious about you mentioned uh, the blockchain specifically mm-hmm. and kind of um, you know getting educated around that and how it might relate to treasury. Um, obviously it's a a big, it's a hot topic with cryptocurrencies in the news, uh, these days. Um, so I'm curious, you know, if you can expand a little bit more on where you see the application of blockchain technology in treasury moving forward. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, no, it's a very good question. Obviously several areas, we have several applications that are being worked on, um, I would say for us, you know, you have blockchain technology and then you have cryptocurrency. So I'm not, you know, as much as I am, uh, we're as a company, I think, you know, trying and, 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 you know, we have some applications for blockchain, probably ahead of the curves of many companies, not necessarily the same on crypto, right? So we are not there yet. Oh, I'm personally not there yet, but that doesn't mean it won't happen. But on blockchain itself, yeah, we have several applications. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, my role is bigger than just a treasury. It includes the procure to pay uh, activities, the order to cash activities. And in that field, in terms of order management and, and procurement activities, we think, we think blockchain has a tremendous uh, opportunity to streamline operations, simplify things. Uh, and we have also a partnership with a, a FinTech company, which I won't mention the name here, but um, where we have also a project that uh, actually uh, would allow to even have a treasury angle to the uh, order to cash. And, and the philosophy here is simply to say that if you have a a PO that is confirmed between parties through a uh, a more secure uh, platform like a blockchain, you can actually start financing uh, of the transaction earlier on than when you just have a, uh, a receivables right to finance. So I think you have uh, certainly you open up the the space for even financing activities or purely treasury way uh, way earlier actually. So that's one avenue, and and we are. Uh, also, the other areas where we have touched on with uh, with some partners is to use blockchain to 
uh, improve security around payment instructions, right? So if you have a secured way to confirm bank payment instruction for your suppliers using the blockchain technology, you can actually avoid a lot of uh, fraud and, and all those kind of issues. So we, we see several applications for treasury. Um, but I would say, as I said, in my role, because I have a bigger, bigger role than purely treasury, I mean, I, if you include the AP, the AR management, you have a lot of opportunities. Uh, and even for things like you wouldn't necessarily think about intercompany flows, I think blockchain offers opportunity to, we, we work with many different systems at, at Flex. We have a lot of ERPs um, because we made a lot of acquisitions over time. And therefore, you can actually use blockchain even for internal applications. So we have multiple activities on that front. But cryptocurrency, frankly, we're not there yet. No, I wouldn't say that we're uh, about to use crypto. But blockchain has obviously in itself a lot of opportunities, we believe. Yeah, yeah to, to be clear, I think uh, insofar as I understand it um, correctly, um, the blockchain technology is kind of the, what um, underscores the, the, the cryptocurrencies, right? But to your point, uh, the blockchain technology in and of itself is, has many applications and that, that distributed ledger you know, creates security. And I think you mentioned also um, more speed than what we see today in a lot of transactions. So mm-hmm. that's fascinating. And I'm sure um, uh, on behalf of our audience, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are curious about it. Um, mm-hmm. Still no questions that I've seen come through from the audience. Joe, we've got some, we've certainly gotten a fair amount of likes here, but not any questions yet. Um, do you have any additional questions uh, that either were text in or we have ahead of time here? Yeah, I just have a, a quick follow up on reg- in regard to uh, the blockchain and, and technology question is, or basically, when you think about it, yes, your scope expands beyond treasury. And some people are just specific to treasury, but being a strategic business partner, these are the conversations that need to be taking place anyway, because whatever happens in AR and AP ultimately impacts you and treasury at the same time. And whatever you do impacts them at the same, like there's a lot of give and take there. So it's a good opportunity yeah. if those conversations aren't taking place to start the conversation. And that's how you become a difference maker. Yes, no, absolutely. And, you know, we have a lot of interest, uh, um, you know, we, uh, we, we had, I mean, I mentioned this partnership with this FinTech, which we showed uh, at some point to a number of other uh, tech treasurers. Uh, so I'm a member of the Tech20 organization. So we, and we saw a lot of interest from treasury uh, or treasurers of large tech companies also in, in that opportunity. I think it's a matter of time. Now, obviously you still have issues on blockchain that you can't, um, you know, minimize, right? And, and the, yeah. the aspect of I don't know if you call it confidentiality, but I mean, ultimately for blockchain to really operate and, and function as, as, as much as, as, uh, as it can and automate things as much as, as it should, you need a little bit of a, a confidence between the parties and exchange of information sometimes, which is sensitive. And, and the more willing parties are to exchange the most sensitive information, the more automated it will become. But this is a huge uh, frankly, threshold for, for companies to, uh, to, to go over. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons uh, why I think it's not taking a hold as much as it, it should, frankly, it's because in particular in our space where we have, we deal with a lot of customers with very sensitive information and confidential information, it's kind of difficult to, to rely completely on this technology and, uh, and, and but, but it's the whole purpose around it too, right? Is to, to allow actually the exchange of confidential information in a secure way. Yeah, that makes sense. And along those same lines, I guess, what are your thoughts around RPA and machine learning and, and automation that comes along in the treasury space? How do you see that impacting uh, the treasury space moving forward? No, we, we have a lot of activities on RPAs, but you know, in my organization, you know, the treasury is really the front office part. And, and then, you know, I have, I mentioned the shared service center where we do the back office and middle office part, even for treasury. That's where all my RP applications are. Uh, you know, we have a big organization uh, in the shared service center. And one of the primary objectives there is to implement RPAs in everything possible. On the front office side, I would say we don't have a lot of RPAs applications at this point. Um, uh, so they're really being kind of shifted to, to our, our back office and middle office part. 
that's it's great. I always love to get that insight. Uh, it's another question that we get quite a bit is, hey, is my job going to be replaced by a robot at some point? And it's like, no, you know, for the most part, most of Treasury is front office. Probably some of the more tactical stuff will be handled just by someone who's not human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, allows, it allows the humans to be more strategic and make those front office decisions because all the I don't want to call it mind numbing work, but all the tactical work is, is being done on the back end. And all you have to do is analyze that information, make the right decision. Mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. cool. um, with that, Scotty, anything else? No, I think, uh, I, like I said before, um, last call, I've monitored my email as well as the comment section here. Um, and so for those of you watching, this is a tremendous opportunity. Any questions, we're about to wrap up here with Christian. Um, so unfortunately, if you ask a question right after we're done, um, he's not going to be able to get to it, but uh, I'm still not seeing anything coming through here, Joe. And we're, we're asking, uh, you know, I'll credit that partially to the fact that we ask the, uh, the usual suspect questions, I guess we should say, and that's, that's what we always like to cover. Um, so with that, uh, we, it doesn't look like we have any additional questions. So Christian, uh, please. And, and, just uh, not even pleased, but thank you very much for your time. I mean, it's uh, there's some great insight in this and just the, the lessons that you've learned and that you've shared with us throughout the course of your career, um, I think is absolute gold. And I'm hoping that the practitioners who are viewing are, are taking this to heart and uh, have some actionable steps moving forward. But thank you very much for your time uh, and a great conversation. No, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Scotty, for the invite. Definitely was my pleasure, and you know, I'm happy to entertain questions. That so feel free to report them to me. No problem. Perfect. Well, Treasury community, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for your interaction. Uh, we will be back on Monday with Ask a Treasury Recruiter, where Scotty and I will have an Ask Me Anything format regarding careers and everything else that goes along with that. Uh, with that, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.